Welcome Rohit. Rohit Thank is you. back from Hi guys. Drive Hello. London. Yes. <laughs> so many YouTubers, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> yeah. Rohit is going to have a mock test today at Southall Driving Test Centre. Yeah. Before we get started, is there anything you want to add? No, this is my first mock test that I've ever done, so... <laughs> yeah, let's hopefully I pass it. We're looking for a clean it sheet. Won't, it won't be great if I didn't pass it for my own channel. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I've had a mishap. So, yeah. Mark from Driving Test Tips, we yeah. did a collab and I got three serious, he got three serious. Oh, yeah? We've done three so far. Okay. I think it's even now, I'm not sure though. Yeah. If you want to go check that out, go to Mark at Driving Test Tips. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get started. The sat-nav is all set up. Cool. Um, all we're going to do is start with the independent drive, as you're probably aware, because I think you do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be on the whole way round. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So normal test, that. 20 minutes, but for you, it's going to be the whole way mm -hmm. uh, sat nav. Okay. Cool. Um, let's start with a tell me question. Yeah. So like a real test. Would you be able to tell me how you check your foot brakes are working before you start a journey? So before moving off, um, get the actually sorry, get the car on, get it moving slowly, uh, press on your brakes. The brake. Shouldn't feel spongy or slack, and the car shouldn't pull to one side. Perfect answer. Okay, are you ready to get started? Yeah. All right, take your time. When you're ready and it's safe, I'd like to drive on and follow the sat nav. Game on, Rohit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel the nerves as well. It's horrible. Is it my turn after this? Yeah. Let's see. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to be serious now, okay? Cool. So I'll just let you concentrate. At the end of the road, turn right, Westbury Avenue, then turn left. Turn right, then turn left. Welcome to Today Pass and on this perfect mock test by Ro here, I will be giving commentary throughout the video of all the tips necessary to pass your test first time. Please don't forget to leave a like down below right now. Turn left, Devonshire Road. Here we're turning left, remember the procedure for all junctions is mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. Okay Rohit, when it's safe, I'd like you to show me, nice and loud, again, beep the horn please. Thank you very much, cheers. So you've completed your tell me and your show me question, nice. Just before we go on to the main road. At the end of the road, turn left, Lady Margaret Road. I'd like you to pull up in a convenient place on the left. It's really important that you know on the real driving test, the examiner will ask you to pull over and stop on the left at least three times. This is part of the driving test. Thank you so much and take your time. Again, continue to follow Satnav and drive on when it's safe to do so. Cool. Why the examiner is asking you to pull over and stop on the left at least three times is to see that you do this safely by checking your mirrors, signalling, and then before moving away, doing the POM routine. Turn left, Lady Margaret Road. POM or POM stands for prepare, observe, move. We will always want to do this before moving away to demonstrate to the examiner that we know how to move away safely. If we fail to do this properly, which is mostly common from not observing before moving away, which means we at least need to check the right blind spot as this is the most dangerous side of the vehicle before we move away into potential oncoming traffic. Failing to do this observation can be a serious fault and it's super important that you practice this many times with your driving instructor before going to see your driving examiner for your real test. It's becoming more common to have 20 mile an hour zones. This is changing rapidly. So roads that used to be marked up as a 30 are now commonly 20. Make sure that you observe for road signs or markings so that you know exactly what the speed limit is on every single road that you drive on for your driving test. If we do go over the speed limit, there are a few factors that the examiners will take into consideration. How long were you over the speed limit? This is called a considerable duration. And also, there's an unspoken rule of 10% plus 2. So if we're at 30 miles an hour and we're doing 35 miles an hour, this would be 10% of the speed limit plus 2. 
This will most likely result in a serious or dangerous driver fault and you will fail the driving test. Therefore, the best course of action is to stay within the limits at all times. 100 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, Carlisle Avenue. Earlier, we referred to junctions and the routine for all junctions will be mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. If we can practice this routine perfectly, it's more likely that on your driving test, this will happen naturally. Right on the roundabout and take the third exit. For this next junction, the mini roundabout, we would check our interior mirror, right mirror, then signal right. We would like to go close to the roundabout. This would be the position. You are allowed to drive slightly on the circle if necessary, which it most commonly is to avoid hitting anything on the left, like the pavement or other road users. If it's a mini roundabout, you may not need to signal for the exit. And again, Bo here, I'd like you to try and find- At the end of the road, turn left, Northcote Avenue, then turn right. Here we have a trained eye. Rohit notices the vehicle on the left trying to move away and signals accordingly to benefit this road user, informing them that he's going to pull over to the left. I'd recommend we always signal just in case events like this may come up. And drive on when you're ready and continue to follow the sat nav. Mm -hmm. Now we only need to signal if it benefits other people. This includes pedestrians and cyclists as well as road users. Now I always recommend or highly recommend to my students that you always signal when you move over to stop and you always signal when you're moving out afterwards. As you can see, there's plenty of road users around and they would definitely benefit from a right signal. If we fail to signal when pulling up to the left or moving off out into the main road, this may be marked down as a serious driver fault. Turn left, Northcote Avenue, then turn right. The examiner on your driving test will also be recording the timing of your signal. I teach five car lengths, and if you always signal five car lengths from every junction, you cannot go wrong. Turn right, Norman Avenue, then at the end of the road, turn left. And find a convenient place to pull up on the left, please. Oh, don't worry about the yellow line or driveway if you need to stop in front of the yellow line and drive, that'd be okay. Thank you, this is perfect actually, because we need about a car length from the vehicle in front, so this works out really nice. Um, pull in some G-forces there. What I'm gonna do is actually just plug it into the car itself, because then that way the sat nav will stay on. So just bear with me, because it has switched off. Might take long. We're just going to get the sat nav restarted. There we go. Okay. I think that's still good. What's it doing? Why has it done that? Maybe it thinks we're facing the other way or something. Uh, that's very strange, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I think once we get moving, yeah, it should be fine. fine. Yeah, should be fine. Okay, cool. All right, take your time. When it's safe to do so, I'd like to drive on and just continue to follow the sat nav. Sure. Turn left, Dane Road. The secret to passing your driving test is the approaching speed to all junctions. We must do this safely. That means you may go from a running speed to jogging to walking and possibly having to come to a stop. The number one reason why everybody's been failing their driving test is observations. So make sure you do your minimal checks of looking right, left, right, again. Yeah, I just noticed the sat nav seems to be giving you some very strange directions for some reason. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is just forget the sat nav for the time being. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you directions just for this next junction. Sure. So at the end of the road, I'd like you to turn right. So okay. don't listen to the sound. After 200 yards, turn left, A4020, the Broadway, then turn left. Here we have a lorry parked on the left side of the road. Rohit has noticed this early, as well as the oncoming traffic positioned accordingly, keeping a safe distance from the pavement and the parked vehicle in front. 
This allows plenty of room for the oncoming traffic to move around and plenty of room for Rohit to move out. Now notice where there's a van or a lorry in this case, there's a man. Rohit keeps a safe distance and passes safely. A4020, the Broadway, then turn left. If you're gaining any value from this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and follow for more content just like this. Now turning right onto a main road just like this, this is South Hall High Street, can be a very anxious and nerve-wracking moment, especially when you know you have an examiner sitting next to you and they're watching every little movement you make. Do not jump the gun, that means don't rush. Make sure that you use the same type of judgment that you would do if you were crossing the road as a pedestrian. The best way to know when to drive out at any junction, and I can't stress this enough, is ask yourself, would you walk out? Now, as you're walking out on a daily day basis, you won't even think about this. It's at the level of unconscious competence. That's like tying your shoelaces. You look down, you don't know how you did it, it's just done. Now, it's very important that you do the same principle, but really get to the conscious level of it, not the unconscious conscience level where you do not think about it and just do it. And make sure that you make the correct decision as to when it is safe to emerge out onto the new road. So ask yourself, would I walk out? This means that you'll walk out across the road to where you're going to drive. So if it's safe to walk out, it's safe to drive out. This must mean that you do not cause any traffic on the main road or the road or lane that you're about to join to slow, stop or swerve. These in the industry is called the three S's. If you cause another vehicle, road user, pedestrian, cyclist to slow, stop or swerve, this may result in a serious driver fault. So remember, the three S's, slow, stop, swerve, may equal a serious driver fault. And if we get one serious driver fault or dangerous driver fault, commonly referred to as major driving fault, this means it's game over. So when you reach the end of the road or you're deciding to drive out at any junction, ask yourself, is this a safe time to walk out? And if the answer is yes, then it's a safe time to drive out. After 300 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, A312, the parkway. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. I have a confession to make. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've ever done this roundabout like this. Oh, yeah? Mm. I actually didn't think it was on the test, but it is. Yeah. What do you mean, like, this is the first time you... I've never turned right on Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know this for a long time either. Take the exit, A312, the parkway. How are you feeling? Good. Nice. Those nerves are relaxed now. <laughs> <laughs> Using the slip road and the new speed limit, Rohit is building his speed to 50 miles an hour. 
This is the safest way to join a dual carriageway or motorway, by using the slip road to build your speed to match the speed of the road that you are joining. Must keep to the left unless you're overtaking or turning right. This is referred to as positioning normal driving. After 300 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, Glencoe Road. Go right on the roundabout and take the third exit. Some roundabouts, just like this one, the Willow Tree roundabout, are incredibly busy. We do get lucky and Rohit makes good progress here, but most of the time you'll have to come to a stop. Now because of the relentless traffic, again remember he got very lucky here, you'll have to have very good clutch control if you're using a manual car at busy junctions by making sure you don't jump the clutch and stall and move away as quickly and as safely as possible. Take the exit, Glencoe Road, then sharp left. Sharp left. After the bus stop, I'd like to pull up on the left, please. Thank you. And then drive on again when you're ready. The only reason why I asked you to pull up there is because a lot of the time I saw tests pull up in that position. So just copying what they do on the your test. I don't know if that's a requirement for the real test, if they have to stop you on a semi-busy road and then get yeah. you to move away. It probably is. Mm -hmm. And they have to do different kind of conditions, like one main road, side roads, close to a car. Yeah, close to a car as well. Yeah. Yeah. And if maybe manuals, even automatics, on a hill, a hill yeah. yeah. They can. After 200 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, Broadmead Road. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. Excellent approaching to the roundabout as you've just seen Rohit demonstrate. If you would like, rewind the video and have a look again. As he approaches the junction, he's looking to the right, yet he is able to keep the lane discipline and hold the left side of the road. Quite commonly, when people approach junctions too quickly, they may suffer from incorrect lane discipline and find themselves drifting out or getting too close to the pavement. So make sure at every single junction, I highly recommend that you approach at an appropriate speed. This will then flow Everything afterwards will just become so easy. So please, I cannot stress this enough. Every single junction that you come to on your driving test, do so at an appropriate speed. This could be from a running to a jogging to a walking speed, possibly having to stop. This is how much I'm stressing this. And make sure that you do your observations. Right, left, right again, as this is the number one reason for six years for people failing the driving test. At the end of the road, turn right, B455, Ryslip Road. Turn right. Recently, my cousin had a test. He came down from Glasgow yeah. and he went to Hendon. Mm -hmm. Did a right turn like you just did, two lanes turning right. Yeah. Didn't stay in his lane. Oh gosh. And received a serious driver yeah. fall. Yeah. Yeah, it's so easy to get caught on those because people just think they can just start turning rather than going that far forward. And there's no road markings, so yeah, yeah. it's difficult to tell that there's still two lanes. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to remember all of that. So, I don't know if you've got any advice, but I usually say to students, if you just keep one meter from the left, you know yeah. you're always in the left. I would say, basically, if you know you're in the furthest left lane, when you're turning right, just aim for the curb. Just keep going for the curb, basically.
After 200 yards, cross the roundabout, and take the second exit, B455, Ryslip Road. Cross the roundabout, and take the second exit. I've just highlighted the sign which is hidden behind a tree. So in the summertime, when the leaves are growing, this will be 100% masked by the tree. Not a safe place, in my opinion, for the road sign. Practice with your driving instructor. Know the roundabout to give you the best chance of passing first time. Yeah, good pointing out that sign was behind a tree. You know, you can imagine in summertime, you wouldn't yeah. see it at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a guy in the southeast, I won't name him, he's an instructor. He goes around with a machete and chops all the branches off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> After 200 yards, turn right, Allenby Road. Yeah, we, I told him that, yeah, and he needs to start invoicing the council as well. Turn right. This is the correct demonstration of the perfect positioning for a right turn, holding the center line of the new road and turning only when we reach the center line of the side road. This prevents us from going into that double decker bus. That wouldn't be too nice, would it? Now, if you do need to go over the center line, that's absolutely fine if you have obstructions like the parked vehicles on the left, but take care when we're over the center line for oncoming traffic. Rohit adjusts his position and speed accordingly to the meeting situation and checks his side mirrors before the change of direction to move in or out around parked vehicles, looking out for those new electric motorcycles which are very difficult to hear and they are quick at accelerating and will try to make their deliveries as soon as they can to make sure that they make the most amount of money. Now I know this because I used to be a delivery driver. So make sure that you hold your correct position and use those mirrors if you need to go in or around parked vehicles. After 200 yards, turn right, Rosecroft Road. Turn right. Excellent positioning here from Rohit and bonus points for slowing and stopping as he notices the pedestrian crossing the side road. He waits in a safe position until it's safe to turn right. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do your manoeuvre on this road. So maybe after this white vehicle with the top box on, mm -hmm. yeah? If there's some space, don't worry about driveways. I'd like you to pull over and stop on the right side of the road, please. At the end of the road, turn left, Westbury Avenue, then take the second left. Thank you. Now I'd like you to reverse back roughly two car lengths, keeping to the right side of the road. I know you know all of this, yeah. and a reasonable <laughs> distance from the curb. When you're ready and it's safe, reverse back. And again, don't worry about the driveways on this occasion. Sure. Okay. Personally, I believe this to be the most simplest maneuver on the driving test, as we literally just need to reverse in a straight line. Not too tricky, right? Now we must do our all-round observations before we start to reverse, and I'd recommend that every couple of meters or every half a car length, look over both shoulders again, as you may have pedestrians trying to cross the road or other road users trying to pass your vehicle. If you do see vehicles coming along, stop, stay stationary, allow them to pass, if they do not pass for whatever reason and it's safe for you to continue to move to make space for the vehicle to pass, that is also okay for your driving test. So remember, nice, slow, steady and plenty of observations. Okay, thank you very much. Drive on when you're ready, when it's safe to do so. I'm in your way. All right, let me get out of your way. Sorry, when it's safe, drive on please. And at the, oh sorry, the sat is coming in your direction. Turn left, Westbury Avenue, then take the second left. Oh. 
After 100 yards, turn left, Sunnycroft Road, then, you have reached your destination on your right. Turn left, then, you have reached your destination on your right. Okay, um, just find somewhere convenient to pull up on the left for me, please. We're at our destination now, so anywhere is fine. Cool, thank you. And just secure the car. We'll leave the engine running, because you're not a learner and I'm not really supervising you. Yeah. I can legally grab the mobile. Sweet, yeah. Yeah, if you were a learner, I'd have to ask you to switch the engine off. Okay, so that is the end of your mock test. <laughs> How do you feel it went? <laughs> Good, not too bad. I don't think I made any serious mistakes. But... That's correct, yeah. Yes. Okay. So I passed. Yes, Yay. congratulations. <laughs> Obviously you passed. So yes. that was really good drive. I have not marked anything, so Brilliant. that is a clean sheet, yeah? Nice. Um, it wasn't enough to mark, but if someone wants something out of this, yeah. uh, I think maybe a little bit closer to the curb when you did your right reverse. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. but yeah. It, like I said, I don't think it was more than a reasonable distance, mm -hmm. but you know, whatever. That's it, yeah? Sweet. Um, so, do you normally use Southall Driving Test Centre? I mean, yeah. Was, yeah? yeah. you're happy with uh, Southall? Yeah. Um, people that are out here, they're always asking, what's the best test centre, what's your recommendations for stuff and all of this. Yeah. So, what well, I you... don't say there's any test centre that I always recommend, it's just that you want to be good enough on a drive where you don't need to worry about what test centre you're at. Really. Okay. You just need to know how to drive, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, would you advise people that if they know how to drive and they can drive anywhere, yeah. then it doesn't matter what test centre? Yeah, exactly. There you go, top tip from Mohit. Yeah, <laughs> only thing is I would say is get some practice in the area, but yeah, you should be able to drive anywhere. Yeah. And then do any test center. You can put you in your comfort yeah. zone. Exactly. Uh, any other tips for people? No, <laughs> well, I don't, not at the top of my head, I'm on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I hate being fun as well. Just go and watch Rohit's YouTube channel, yeah. Drive London. Plenty of tips there. There's so many tips there, yeah, yeah. so yeah. help help you out. Yes. Yeah. All uh, right, so we'll leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's your turn. Cool. To jump in my my car and my turn. My... Yeah. <laughs> in a manual. So for people that know me, they know what I'm like. I don't know if you know how much I've been ranting. No. No. Okay. Well, we'll leave that. Don't. No comment. I want to know. <laughs> you want to know? Oh, mate, I can't stop ranting about manual cars. Uh, yeah. You don't like them. Well, it's not that I don't like them. I like them, but I just think they're obsolete. Obsolete. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. So, yeah, I'll try not to go on a tangent, yeah. all right? Stay safe, <laughs> stay tuned, Yes. and we'll see you next time. Take care.